How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane. I'm here to give you another Marvel Secret Invasion episode review. Today's episode is episode two, True Believers Promises. Kind of reminds me of that song. Hmm, hmm, hmm. A promise is promises. I will not sing the whole thing. Regardless of that, please do not forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified of more videos such as this one. I'm purposely blocking this video right here because what a good episode. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh my goodness. So, off the bat, we do get a recap from the Captain Marvel movie because that's where these scrolls appear from, right? Yeah, that's where the whole scroll thing happens. Um... I obviously have, I wrote down some notes and I guess I just should take it from here. But see, I don't know where to go. See, there's an important thing about Fury and his blackness in here. And I got to admit, one of the things I pride myself on with my account here, while I do talk about all things entertainment, media, movies, television shows, comics, video games, anime, especially... I'm not going to shy away from a lot of the social justice things, especially when art imitates life and life imitates art. So be ready for that. And um, it won't be hard to guess where I fall in line with certain things. I am an ally of many things. So let's talk about the one thing I didn't talk about last week. Let's talk about the AI trailer. Or should I say the AI intro, which I didn't realize that the intro was AI until after I watched the dang thing. And oh my God, let me start off with a person who is friends with a lot of artists, literally friends with tons of artists, kind of considers himself an artist, right? Um, uh, pardon my four letter word, fuck AI, right? I mean that with my whole chest. I'm not going to say it with my whole chest right now, but I mean that like AI can be used for good things right but when in terms of art and drawing things a lot of times it's 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 and even now a lot of times it's stealing what what a lot of these other ai um i i don't know what you want to call them programs do you know you put in prompt words you run it through a filter they go out for millions upon millions and thousands upon thousands of people's works and use that as a basis and a lot of times uses it and maps it over and they don't get credit for it and as a matter of fact the reason why this ai intro is so controversial that's what the writer strike is about the writers with the rise of ai art stealing from artists there being a literal lawsuit against several of those uh, command modules by some very prominent artists within, I guess you could say, not the comics industry, but you know, just art. Period. People from Instagram. Uh, I can't remember Sarah's full name, but I know you've seen her 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 comics before, and her and two other people they they sued over this because these things are stealing, and the reason why that the writers are going on strike they want to be guaranteed that hey you won't just go to an ai thing put in some prompts and have it write a whole story i mean chat g just a gp gpt chat gpt as horrible as it is it does that you we have ai things that imitate people's voices sometimes very well have you ever seen the obama trump and biden videos where like they're playing Yu Gi Oh or like they're arguing over Legend of Zelda games, which one are the best ones? Recently, I just saw one where Patrick is singing Frankie Beverly and Maze. As hilarious as it, as it is, because it is hilariously bad, this stuff is serious. And, I'm, and I, I saw and read somewhere yesterday that the uh, actors, Screen Actors Gail Sag, were thinking about going on strike as well just to join them because... During this writer strike, to show solidarity, solidarity, you're not going on TV shows. People aren't writing things. It's just things that are all off the cuff. And I hope something is done soon. And I hope something not not just for being able to watch movies and stuff like that, but just it's not right. A lot of these people aren't even paid well anyway. So, but yeah, the a the AI just doing the curves and everything and the melding. It just it 
was supposed to give you a sense of eeriness and it did do that and they hired people that was that did some of the concept art well they hired people to do concept art but then they hired someone else to use a thing that's supposed to do this and uh, I get that it's kind of a metaphor on, hey, scrolls are trying to take over the earth and they could take you over. It's just kind of like this AI stuff. I get it. I hope you change that intro. If not in episode three, episode four, five, and six, just, I don't know, man. They're probably not going to change it, but I don't know. I That's such a bad taste. Let's talk about backstories. Um, I'm going to be a little bit harsh here. Graphics backstory is so flag smashery, it's not even funny. Like everything stemming from this Thanos snap from from the blip where people are gone, Fury comes back, then he's leaving again. And Graphics whole entire story. In 1997, he was on the front lines and his parents got gloriously died in battle and he found a way to come to Earth. Talos, Talos put out the, the call and we get this one lady, this one scroll lady who comes up with with him. We will see her again later. Who's like, you know, there's a graphic, blah, blah, blah. And the scroll greeting is forehead to forehead. He tried to do that with graphic, and graphic. It's like, and eh, graphic's still a kid. And she's like, well, you can use him. He's obviously battle hardened and battle tested. And if he was like, he's a kid, I, mm, I don't know about that. And we see the beginning of Fury's promise you all work with me and i promise i will find you a place to stay you just gotta turn look like people and then we'll figure this all out initially everybody turned to a white person and then i saw one black scroll in the back i'm like okay cool soren's soren she was there she was the very first person to do it and this is where this bitterness comes from right again flag smashery where we we, we filled in and we began new lives and blah, blah, blah. And that's... I get annoyed with these characters. Also very funny. They both they both are black. Well, they both were black. Flash Smasher and Gravik when he's in human form are black. That's interesting. But we get these characters that are just like... You're hurt and you're bitter. And it's supposed to make them relatable. And you understand, understand it. But Gravik killed Soren. Now he's just killed Maria Hill. Eh, that's all I can say. And it, and it kind of makes me wonder now when it comes to Gaia, is Gaia a double agent? We see Gaia working everything and talking through everything, right? And Gaia actually gave up the safe house. Not the one of the, the um, scrolls that was posing as one of the American terrorists. He got caught. We'll talk, to, talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> but Gaia, is Gaia actually doing a double agent thing? Does she plan on betraying Gravik, since he killed her mom, heavily talks shit about her dad. Tells her dad weak after he has made himself general, uh, scroll master general. Get into that in a minute. And you know, we see her sneaking in, seeing these scientists, the Daltons. Essentially, they're gonna make super scrolls, y'all. Which I might as well just. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute too. But they're making super scrolls, and um. We see her, we, you know, we, we, we see her kind of playing the lines. I can see her going, yeah, no, I don't want to be general. Killing Gravik, probably episode four. I don't want to be, or episode four or five, probably four, because it's only six episodes. Uh, also, 58 minutes long, 57, if you don't include the credits. I always watch the credits, though. But I can see her going, you know, Gravik wanted to be a general. I'm not trying to be a general. I'm trying to be the queen and she can properly be the queen or maybe she'll be different since this is the mcu and it's very much mirrors uh 1610 the ultimate universe same time maybe it's different who knows um we get into some things about ta- talos talos talatana talatemtos being a liar um one of the underlying things in here is i have to i gotta say it and my major thing, because I put I put a mark on here, they let Nick Fury be black. And man, if this wasn't PG, I think it's uh, PG fourteen. This wasn't PG fourteen. 
damn they could make this thing R because it's so Sam Jackson so close to letting a mother flipper fly out of his mouth. Um, they let Nick Fury be black. They let him be who is even in even in the comics. There's a part in the comics where he meets six one six is Peter, who's like he's like, "What's your Nick Fury like?" Like, well, he's he's white. Like, oh, sorry to hear that. Funny shit like that. Cool shit like that. Him bonding with Miles because they're brothers, right? They're black. Now, in here, when we find out how Telos lied, he talks about, because Telos had, the Russians are looking for him. And again, it's a black man in Moscow. It won't be hard to find Nick Nicholas J. Fury. And Talos, you know, shifting in between being a lady to being the normal Mr. Keller form that he has. And he tells Nick tells him about the time when him and his mom, they would take they would take trips from Alabama. He's from Alabama. Who? So he know about and he's old. So he was probably around during the 50s and 60s. And someone who has a mom who was around during those key moments. That's a there's a lot of history and he carries uh Sam Jackson was around during that stuff too. So I, I I'm enjoying what I'm seeing being brought to this character. A character that should have got his own movie a long time ago. But I digress. It does about going from a trip from Alabama to Detroit. You know, they couldn't be in the dining cart like what they're in now. They he had to be in a car uh, a part of the train that the bathroom barely wo- uh, worked. It was hot. They would carry, what was the food they brought? They brought fried chicken, deviled eggs, um, pound cake in a shoebox. And I can't, I can't remember that's what he brought, which it adds to the story because so, it's so, I love being able to identify with my characters. And that's what this stuff is all about, y'all. When people who complain about, why does this have to be this? This has to be this. People need to be able to, <coughs> excuse me identify with these characters right um oh yeah white bread and and the chicken would be gone by the time they pulled off because it smelled too good right but um him and his mom would make up games to play while they're going and one of the games is tell me something i don't know such as tell me something i don't know about you and Susie. and obviously he's you know, him and Susie, they had a long standing game of doctor going on. You know what playing doctor is if you don't look it up. And he's not going to tell her that. So he lied and said, oh, me and Susie saw a polka dot, a frog with polka dots. And just the fact that he lied, his mother knew everything she needed to know about him and Susie's relationship. So he goes to Talos and says, Talos, let's play the game. Tell me something I don't know about Skrullos. He tells him about the war and blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, no, no. The game is. Tell me something I don't know. And apparently, and this seems like a teaching, teaching moment, right? A million of them fled. And he said, tell me something I don't know. All of them are on Earth. There is a million scrolls on Earth at, at present time in the MCU. And he, and I love, he gets, Nick Fury gets to be a character says are you out of your reptilian ass mind and every we sent the signal everyone except who was an emperor drudges colony drudges is actually the scientist in the comics that created the super scrolls who are based on the fantastic four members the original fantastic four members blah duh and Nick is pissed. He's like, you lied to me. Well, you know, I had two choices. Either let my people die or bring them here. You would have done the same thing. And he says the host gets to assess the terms of the visitation. And of course, this is back and forth. But I didn't know if Nick was coming back, right? The snap. But then when he got back, I love I love Talos's like his verbiage is very 70s. He's like, oh, man, the gravity's too much for me, man. I'm going up into space. And Talos believes that humans and scrolls can coexist and Fury snaps back and goes humans can barely coexist with one another since we've been able to walk up right there's been wars and everything what do you think they're going to do when it's you know beings that can morph into them amongst them and it's such it's true though although I'm we're at a Nick Fury whose back is against the wall he's old he just lost one of his closest friends and he just found out one of his other closest friends had been lying to him for 
decades, right? For decades. And Tails gets kicked off the train. Um, so we're going to the second part about how they make they let Nick Fury be black, right? So because of this explosion and all these things that have happened, Rhodey, we saw Rhodey first episode, he's the right hand man of the prayers. He's speaking to these United Nations. We have the Prime Minister of UK and all these other people saying, no, there's no way the US did it. The Kremlin thinks the US did it. They want the American government to speak for them, which even if it was Americans that did it, but see, it's because Nick Fury's face is going around. And I love how Rhodey goes, I'm not going to take the take the photographs from Russia seriously. No. And I guess Slovakia, he very funny because he goes, if Slovakia rolls their eyes at me one more time, I'm going to get in my suit and carpet bomb them, which is followed up with Nick Fury calling him after the thing saying, damn, why don't you carpet bomb him? Hilarious. But they meet up at a bar and it's locked down. And it's this conversation that Rhodes and Fury has, which is why I'm wearing my war machine shirt. This is a war machine shirt, Air Force war machine. It's because this conversation is one of the best things, one of the best scenes that's ever happened in the MCU, at least in the current MCU. I don't care if you're upset about race and ethnicity and nationalities and borders and all this other shit being brought up. It's look, you are the same people that say you want realist, realistic things, right? That is a realistic thing. That's actually one of the beautiful things about the MCU. So actually one of the beautiful things about Marvel Comics, why I like them more, is while there can be fake places like Atlantis, Wakanda, Utopia, Asteroid M, uh, Madripoor, Latveria, they still have real places like Chicago, New York City, uh, Los Angeles, uh, Oklahoma, which is where New Asgard was for a while. While there are fake places, the basis is in the real world. And this is what it is. So shut up. But they have this great conversation about, you know, Rose found out about the whole scroll things, right? 15 years ago when he got shown something. And I'm just, I'm going to pull up my phone notes, right? Uh, oops. Here we go. And you know, he's saying we're being invaded, right? We're being invaded, and you don't. He's, he's asking him, what do you know about your security detail? Which I love the fact that there's already a glass of whiskey waiting for Nick. It's both of them. They're being brought brought in when, every time they finish their glass. And the question gets brought, should we bring in our friends? No. No, don't bring in our friends because then they come down to fight them. Then they get they get copied, and now they're doing bombings. He was trying to stop everything. And Rhodey's, uh, uh, so Fury saying that this is his war, and he needs him to back him. He's like, I can't do that in our line of work. There's no can. There's what you can do and what you won't do. And he's like, Well, then I won't. And he's getting kind of political, and he said, "Hey, don't forget who got you your seat where you are, your, where you're at." Because they pull in the beginning, Rhodey saying, "Let's not do uh, who uh, who's is bigger when they're talking about titles." Because technically, Fury's supposed to outrank him. And he's saying, "Do I owe you?" He's like, "No, we owe each other. Men who look like us don't get promoted because of who our daddies know." You know, we wrestle power from mediocre Alexander Pierce's. Alexander Pierce is the guy who was uh, from the Civil War movie. Bad guy. A-hole. Actually part of Hydra doing the Hydra thing. You're welcome. So in case you forgot who he was, you're welcome. And, you know, we earned our positions with blood. He's like, help a brother out. And they brought a car for Fury. And he says, the point of us wrestling power from men from people who don't look like us and is to not hand it to mediocre men who look like us. The point of power is to be uncompromised, uncompromising. He basically tells him he's fired. You know, he, you know, you don't want to hand it to people just because you, you share history with them. You have ancestors with them. And they was like, they sent you to fire me. He said he volunteered. <sighs> 
And then the guard goes to grab Nick Fury. Nick Fury. Still Nick Fury. Puts his hand behind his back and says one of the coldest lines I've ever seen. Don't think because you have stripped me of my titles that I relinquish my DNA. Don't forget who I am. I am Nick Fury. Breaks dude's hand, takes his gun, throws a gun on the table, straightens up his hat. Because Nick Fury's been dripped out this entire series. Two episodes been dripped out. And when Rory's like, you know, don't do anything rash. He's like, and you wonder why you're out. And Nick Fury moves in. He says, I'm Nick Fury. Even when I'm out, I'm in. Now, personally, I think if Rhodey was really going to try to stop him, he could have. There could have been more security stopping Fury from just leaving out, who immediately has an emotional breakdown when he's outside because Rhodey is, again, doubting. Rhodey is another person who's supposed to be close to him. Because him and Rhodey's supposed to have some type of friendship there, which I really do like. Although, in all fairness, in Iron Man 2, he did call uh, Rhodey the little brother. He said, little brother kicked your ass to Tony. So I'm just, I'm just saying. Just saying. But I digress. Um, I do I do like seeing that there is a connection there. And it's interesting because Rhodey was close in understanding with um, Sam Wilson new captain america in his series now, some people think roadie's a scroll because roadie would never act like this let's be honest um even the terrence howard roadie is very he's military man he's very yeah this is how things are done we do it this way he always has a, a bit of a stick up his ass but we love roadie because roadie is cool comic roadie animated series roadie roadie is cool no matter how much far, no matter how far the stick is up his butt, I don't think it's a scroll. I do think it's Rhodey firing Nick so that the U.S. government can say, "Dude doesn't work for us anymore." And when Nick can serve, can fix this on his own, it'll be fine, and the U.S. won't have to deal with it. Don't think he's a scroll. I hope he's not a scroll. Granted, I thought halfway through episode one maria hill could have been a scroll but she wasn't still hope she's an lmd but that conversation was great i'm liking that we send colonel rhodes or whatever position he has now i'm liking seeing him being in more of these series especially when it deals with global thing and especially when nick fury says we're supposed to protect the planet that's 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 the job right that's what you're supposed to be doing but it's interesting very interesting uh Maria Hill being dead, we do see her mom. Her mom said, you know, her mom is getting mad because no one would tell her where she was when she died. And she's telling Nick, however she died, don't let her death be in vain. Don't let it be for nothing. And Rhodey's going, yeah, you let one of our best agents get murdered. You know, she died because somebody wanted to hurt him. And you know that Nick feels all that guilt weighing on the shoulder especially since he hasn't talked to her in a long time which again i still find that weird but okay nick is going through some things kind of i can see why him and tony were close because those two take trauma not very well and have to detach themselves from people let me see so let's let's go back on the track about these scrolls right well Gravik is taken to a uh, meeting after, by Gaia, who, you know, he's saying, yeah, you know, I could have killed him, but I didn't. You know, you don't give a man what he wants. And who knows if he's full of shit or not. But they go to this council meeting. Oh, lo and behold, all the council members are not obviously scrolls, but there's the prime minister that was there. They're all the people who have power in the world. Shit. And on top of them having power in the world, one of them, the prime minister, once is on the side of Gravik saying he needs to be the general, not during wartime, but, you know, we need to do this now. Forcing the guy who is the scroll of NATO, who at the gets chopped in his throat by one of her henchmen. Everyone falls in line except for the uh, any woman, Shirley. She's like... <laughs> 
you all seem to forget our history, but it, we didn't become refugees because we weren't unwilling to go to war. It's because we were very ready to go to war. That's the scrolls I recognize. I recognize those scrolls from the comic books. They're not. It's it's not just they're good and then they're bad. You feel bad for the refugees. You feel bad for the Talos of the MCU because Talos and the Talos in the comics is a scroll who couldn't transform. So he's like a f- super fighter guy. And here, sure hope Talos doesn't die, but I hope he gets I hope he gets his balls back, man. But <clears throat> uh Bravik let her go. Although he could be setting up a trap for uh Talos because she calls Talos instantly saying, Yeah, they made him general and what do we do? And Talos, who got kicked off that train, remember who says set up a meme between him and I. He killed Soren. Tell him I want to talk about my daughter. And obviously, and so more cool scroll stuff, but I cannot get to the other scroll stuff without talking about Sonya, played by Olivia Coleman. So the Kremlin, the Russians took the scroll that is posing as a human terrorist. They're beating his butt in this butcher shop. And she comes in and she's just commanding everything. She's like, yeah, I know you speak English. I speak Russian. They're in the back, right? Okay. Goes past there. Tells them, hey, I'm in control now. Has to do the phone. It's his boss. They all get out. Uh, she asks, hey, where's the escape hatch? Which plays an important part later on. Where's the escape hatch? Right there. Cool. She's torturing his dude. She cuts off his fingers. Like, all right, cool. Turns green. You're obviously a scroll. Has this serum that boils your blood. Like, makes you, like, excruciating torture. And he's like, go ahead, stab it in my arm. She stabs it in his ass, which I'm like, she is a brutal lady. I like it. I like her more than Val. I like it. Probably because I like Olivia Coleman a lot. Really great a- actress. Digress. So he's afraid to tell the thing because Gravik will kill him. Tells them, uh, tells her about the Daltons, about making them stronger. Tells them about, tells her about the plan, basically the overall plan. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Give me, give me a second here. Oh boy. This, oh, nope. This stuff is just, it's, this was a really good episode. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Basically just tells them about things to make him stronger now, he lies gravity comes in they murder everybody she's like all right your guys are here with obviously uh gaia being the driver with that new that new kid that just came in in the car but like hey you stay here we'll go around the back she escapes now it's very funny because their escape house their safe house was taken he didn't mention the safe, safe house. And I remember looking at my notes like, he didn't mention the safe house. And then I remembered that Gaia is the one who told about the safe. She probably, I don't know how or when she sent that information when she left from the car. But that's interesting. Uh, and this dude gets murdered before they get home. He's like, did we make it home? Pe- Pe- Pecos. We're almost home, brother. Pow. And like, it's interesting that Gravit gives, gives everybody else his gun. To do the dirty work. Very. is very much a villain trait. Like I'm not going to do it. You're going to do it. Even when he gave it to a guy. I was like if I'm not out, out an hour. Shoot this guy in the head right. But. It's interesting juxtaposition. Because Gravik is willing to kill other scrolls. Where Ta- Talos doesn't want to. I fear that Talos. Is definitely walking into a trap. Obviously walking into a trap. Um, which we talk about the super scrolls, right? Because <clears throat> Gaia has snuck in behind, uh, behind Pagos because Gravik was whispering orders. They all got back. He was hailed as a hero by these stupid non battling scrolls, which I kind of wish they would get taken out. Yeah, I said it, which I find interesting that. The council was going to try to punish him because 2,000 people, innocents, children too, right? But uh, the Super Scrolls, y'all. So, originally Super Scrolls based on 
which is fantastic. Ben Grimm, The Thing, uh, The Invisible Woman, Susan Storm, and Johnny Storm, The Human Torch. Well, here, when looking on the computer, claiming that she was checking up on, you know, the face for uh, their young guy, right? Who already had a black guy's face, right? Why didn't they just find the guy who was imitating it? Just whatever. He still has the same face. It's weird. Anyway, um, we see Groot. We see Frost Beast. The Frost Beast come from Thor The Dark World. That second movie. I forgot that that thing came through the Aether. Came through the, the warp in space. And it was just running around. And no one did anything about it. I forgot about that thing. Uh, number three is Cole Obsidian. Who is Cole Obsidian? It was a hand of Cole Obsidian. Cole Obsidian is one of the Black Order. That is his name in the MCU. The giant guy with the axe. His act- His name in the comics is actually Black Dwarf. Like a Black Dwarf star. I can see why they didn't use his name. Some also use the name Black Ogre. I've heard people call him Black Ogre, but his name is Black Dwarf in the comics. I can see why they would change the name. So his name is just Coal Obsidian, which makes... Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. And the fourth thing is Extremis. I'm sorry, Extremis. Because Extremis is actually cool in the comics. Extremis is just shooting up and you have red hot power and regeneration. Which each of those things probably is kind of like a juxtaposition of the Fantastic Four. You have the Groot stretching limbs. You have... Uh, the flames from the extremists. You have the rock man kind of body of coal obsidian. And then you have the frost thing, which I guess is going to be standing for uh, Sue Storm's invisible powers. I can see that. So probably by the end of this thing, we're going to get a Super Scroll versus War Machine. Or a Super Scroll versus, yeah, probably Super Scroll versus War Machine. I'm interested. There's tons of Super Scrolls, though, because the Super Scrolls and Secret Evasions are mixed matches of different heroes. The X-Men one is, I want to say Cyclops, Wolverine, um, Colossus, and I want to say Nightcrawler. I know it's it's either those three or those four. They have a bunch of different ones. So who knows what else is going to happen? If we're going to get some more superheroes, it's going to be more than just Rhodey. I don't know if this series can take it because you're trying to make the main focus be Nick Fury for the most part. But yeah, Song of Badass, amazing. That's a great part. Conversation between Rhodey and Fury, amazing part. Let's talk about Nick Fury having a scroll wife. Now, this woman looks like this looks like it's the same actress that played the woman that brought Gravik to the meeting in 1997 in London, by the way, who brought him there. I, th- I think Nick might know that his wife is a scroll. Although, you know, he had to find this car, drove this car. Didn't know he would have like a home in Europe, but OK, I can see that. Um, She's cutting it up. Green skin. He come in. She black. And Otis Redding's try a little tenderness. That was all of the art, the Afro art and all that other stuff. I love I love it. I love all of it. It's amazing but he puts on his ring they kiss and embrace and that's how the episode ends but man it kind of makes you wonder does he know that she's a scroll i think he does like she's built as i want to say priscilla fury but someone i remember watching someone else's review where they said she has a different name i mean all scrolls have basically two names if you're working with nick like talos is called uh r keller maybe it's just keller i don't want (laughs) he's called keller when he talks to other people so maybe she's just she's a she's fury but then she's scroll name and then human name kind of like you know and shang chi where it's like what's your chinese name makes sense to me it makes sense uh yeah i'm gonna give this episode a five out of five because While some people, you know, um, no offense to those with short attention spans. You know what? No. Super offense to those with short attention spans, right? I'm not going to talk about 
you know, people who have ADHD and ADD and all that stuff. No, no, we're not going to get derogatory like that. But those of you with short attention spans who says everything needs to be blowing up. Apparently, you don't watch spy movies. Apparently, you don't watch spy television. Some people, some person said on my first view and I thought it was boring. And I had to watch it again and realize it was good. No, that just means that, OK, fine. You had to watch it twice. But it's it's about secret invading people. And it's with the super spy Nick Fury on top of the fact that it can't be like the comics because not every hero is introduced. We're introduced. We're not even introduced to the scrolls via the Fantastic Four in this universe. It's via Captain Marvel. So there's going to be differences. And one of the key differences being that this is more of a spy thing and less of a superhero beatdown showdown thing. Um, it's very comforting to know that you can, you know, kill scrolls through conventional means. But it's also very scary that they can just beat the crap out of you because they're supposed to be super strong. I was waiting for that one scroll to break out of the chains, but I guess he had been so battered and, bru and bruised and beaten up that he couldn't just break out. But yeah, this is a five out of five for me. Uh, again, fantastic acting from everybody. I don't care how much I kind of scoff at te uh, at a uh, graphics backstory. Uh. Everyone's acting very well. In fact, at acting is top notch. I like the fact that because it's secret uh, invasion and because there are literally millions of scrolls on Earth, we don't know who we can trust. Is it Rhodey? Is does Fury know that his wife is a green? Is a greenie? Yeah, we call her. Well, let's call them greenies, right? Don't know if she's a greenie. Don't know if she's a scroll. He probably does. Uh, cause he's gonna talk to her. This is he's back home. He has to figure something out. Something I did look up because I looked up. I knew about her last week. Something I did know is the actress, and I'm not going to. Uh, we're not going to disrespect her. We're actually going to do this live. Um, cause I actually put. I, I mm -mm, we're gonna do this live. The actress secret invasion who plays his wife in this series she has she's very she's a notable actress around the same age as sam jackson and one of her roles is being the first black woman to play cinderella uh her name is charlene woodard there we go she was in and we don't get she, she was in she's got an, wow she had an Obi Award, a Tony Award, she was in the FX TV series Pose. Uh she was in a Showtime movie Run for the Dream, the Gail Denver story. But yes, she is billed as the first black female on Broadway. Oh, she's actually the first black female director on Broadway. Holy crap. Um, but she was also the first black woman to play Cinderella. It's pretty damn cool. Uh, she was in the original company for Ain't Misbehaving. Damn, this woman has an, a wonderful uh, actor, actorial, is that a word? Uh, amazing actor and stage show uh, resume. So, when I tell you that, act, man, they pick some really great people to play the roles in this show. Only six episodes. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a movie with this level, with this level of talent that's in here. But I am enamored with the acting in here. But this this episode, I, I've said it five times already. I'm going to say it one more time. Five out of five for sure. I'm loving this. So we just got to figure out who's a scroll and who isn't. And figure out how Nick is going to solve this issue that he has kind of caused himself by not fulfilling promises that he has made. I hope him and Talos get back on the same page. We're at the halfway mark next week. Let's see what's going to happen. Let me know what you thought of the episode in the comment section down below. Are you all in on this spy thriller, spy thriller, superhero, sci-fi? This is, it's Marvel does their best work when they take other genres and it's molded into this and I, i'm enjoying this greatly don't forget to leave a comment 
hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified as well. Please be good. Be blessed. Thank you for taking some time out to listen to me talk about secret invasion. Be good to yourselves. Be good to others. Either way it goes. Don't be a jerk. All right. Remember, there's people out there that care about you. So reach out to somebody. Somebody would rather talk to you today than to miss you and mourn you tomorrow. Well, true believers, I'm Shane, and I'm definitely going to see you next time. Excelsior.